In order to understand centripetal acceleration, we needed to resort back to the vector nature of velocity. Thus, let's use our vector knowledge to determine the direction of centripetal acceleration. Here's the pathway of a moving object. It's moving in a circular path, like a car going around a circular track at 50 kilometers per hour. Let's pick a point on the track to determine what the car's velocity was at that exact point. At this point, we can draw a velocity vector to represent the car's velocity. A vector has two properties to consider. The vector's length represents the speed of 50 km per hour. The vector's direction is shown by the arrow pointing in the same direction that the car is aimed at this point on the track. Let's call this vector v0, the original velocity. Let's pick another point along the track. Again, we can draw the vector representing the car's velocity at this exact point. Same length as the other vector, that is the car still going 50 km per hour, but in a different direction now. Let's call this one Vf. Since acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, we need to subtract the velocities, which will determine the direction of the change. Vf minus V0. Recall that we can show a vector subtraction by switching the direction of V0 and changing our equation to Vf plus the negative version of V0. So, to determine the acceleration, we can simply add these two vectors and get our delta V. Notice that the resulting direction of the change in velocity, or acceleration, is directly towards the center of the circle. This is true of all centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration involves an object moving around a circular path, and centripetal acceleration is always directed towards the center of that circular path.